Turn around. Don't turn around. I'm taking your wallet. Hey, mister. Stop right there. You all right? Yeah. Where is he? Over there. It's Jim Kim. He's dead. Did you know him? Yeah, a little. He, he has a farm near the Ponderosa. That's yours? Yeah. He slugged me and grabbed it. The wallet's worth more than what's in it. Three dollars. inquest is to learn all we can about the manner and cause of James Campbell's death. Now, how well did you know him? I talked to him once or twice. He, we had a drink together once. When you saw him take something out, out of Mr. Travis's coat, did you know who he was? No, it was too dark. But you were certain he had a gun in his hand? Yes, I could see that. Did you know that a robbery had been committed? No, not until later. But there was one man lying on the ground, another one running away with a gun in his hand. He ran out of the alley. I shouted at him to stop, and he started firing at me. That's all, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you. I'll try to make this as brief and painless as I can, Mrs. Campbell. You and your husband bought a farm on Red Spring Road about two years ago. What is the condition of that farm now? Well, we were making a go of it. Just barely. Everything we made had to be put back into it. We were hoping that next year uh, might be a better year. On the 11th, your husband came into town. Can you tell us why? Our uh, mortgage payment was due. Jim was going to try to get a loan from Mr. Morgan at the bank against a crop of votes we were putting in. Did he have any hope of getting that loan? He'd been turned down twice, but he was going to try. It is the finding of the coroner's jury that Mr. Kennedy killed James Campbell in self-defense. While we sympathize with the widow, it is clear that her husband died while committing a crime. No charge will be made against Mr. Kennedy. The inquest is adjourned. Mrs. Campbell. There's not much I can say. Well, why don't you just say what there is to be said and be done with it? I'm, uh, sorry. You're right. That's not much. Miss Campbell, you dropped this letter. I'll be glad to mail it for you, if you'd like. You do that, Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Cartwright, I know this is a bad time of the year to be asking for time off. But there's something I've got to do. So I'm going to have to knock off a little early every afternoon for a while. Any idea how long? Maybe a couple of months. <whistles> Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll do my share. Just take whatever you think is fair out of my pay. Well, no question of that. All right. All right. Anything else? No. Uh, Candy, there's something else I'd like to say. 
That coroner's jury declared you innocent. Now, don't you go off convicting yourself. I won't. But when I have a debt, I pay it. My name's Candy. What's yours? Your mother around? Thank you. My name's Candy. I'll remember. Manage. The furrows aren't very straight. But then plowing's not a woman's work, is it? What are you planting? Oats. At least we had that seed paid for. Now, if you don't mind. If, uh, if you're trying to do this all by yourself, you've got to be behind on your other chores. Let me do the plowing and, and you tend to that. And, uh, Ken. Finished for the day. I took care of the team. I left the plow up in the field. I don't expect any thanks. But you're going to have to tell me if you want me to come back. I didn't ask for your help, Mr. Kennedy. That's right, you didn't. you understood I didn't want you around here. You also thought you could keep this place up by yourself, didn't you? Well, look at it. There's no wood for the kitchen stove. The door has fallen off the hen house. The plow needs to be done. The fences need to be fixed. You had to stop trying to keep up to do the washing. I don't want your help. We need somebody's. I'm doing just fine by myself. Nobody's come around, huh? Well, why should they? It's a busy time. They've got their own things to do. Well, then it better be me, because you need help. What makes you so pig-headed? I was about to ask you the same question.
ponderosa mail. Uh, most of it's for Ben. Uh, do you have anything for Mrs. Campbell? Mrs. Campbell, huh? I um, heard you were doing the chores out there. For me? Chores and plowing. Working two places at once must be kind of exhausting. Just give me your mail. No offense intended. One letter. that table. Here, Fanon, don't spill. Thank you. There's a uh, letter for you at the post office. You didn't have to go to that trouble? It's all right. I was going by anyway. Uh, won't you come in? Look, you're sopping wet. The storm will likely be over by the time dinner's finished. If you'd care to stay. I would. If you'd like to get out of those wet clothes, I think I can find a shirt and a pair of pants for you. No, thanks. I, uh, I'll just dry out here by the fire. Food smells good. Oh, be ready in a minute. It's not very fancy, but it's hot. No hurry. You didn't have to help with this. I enjoyed the dinner. It looks like he's had quite a day. Yes. He does that all the time. Excuse me. I'm going to go tuck him in bed. Will you let me carry him? No, that's all right. I no, do please, it. please let me. His father used to do it. I see. The rain stopped. I better be on my way. Thank you for bringing the letter. He didn't even read it yet. Came all the way from Wyoming, too. Good night, Mr. Kennedy. Good night. Thank you. Like one happy little boy. 
Oh, well, I had one of those when I was a kid. I can still remember. He can be a handful. Sometimes I think raising a child's harder than breaking a colt. Oh, no, no, kids are easier. With a kid, you don't have to worry about a saddle. Oh. Maybe you're right. I never thought about it that way. Can you stay for dinner? No, thanks. Making a place for me at your table takes food away from you and Kenny. I'm used to feeding three. I I've invited a friend to dinner. He hasn't answered me yet. Head touched the pillow. The way that little guy goes all day, I'm not surprised. That piece of pie? Oh. Oh, I've had two already. <laughs> That's a handsome pie, Mrs. Campbell. Lisa. I've always been partial to rhubarb pie. I just never found anyone who could make it as well as Anne, not till now. And your sister? My wife. I didn't know you were married. I'm not. It was over a long time ago. You never remarried? No, I had too much wandering to do. That's no life for a woman. Now, you, that's a different story. I don't think I know what you mean. You're young. You're pretty. And you're a widow. You've got a son. You've got a farm you're dead set on keeping and you can't do it alone. It's time you started thinking about a husband. I think it's a little too soon for that. Now, how did I get on that subject? <laughs> That's much too serious. Yes. Yes, it's much too serious. Come on, have another piece of pie. It's just going to go to waste. <laughs> no, go to waste with Kenny in there. He could eat the whole thing by himself. Yeah, maybe you're right. Was it very long before you stopped missing your wife? Long time. I guess maybe that's why I started wandering. Sometimes I still miss her. Thank you for telling me. Better get these dishes. Give me help. No, no. no. Look, you've got a long ride home. Somebody tied this across the trail just high enough to knock a rider off his horse. Well, they must have done it sometime late last night. I came along the trail in the afternoon. It wasn't there then. It's new. Anybody bought it in Virginia City, Mr. Thompson ought to know who it was. No, the only thing he knows about is local gossip. Yeah, but... Why was it done? Well, if that's somebody's idea of a joke, I'd have to stay around and, and watch to enjoy it. I didn't see anyone around there. Those tracks were on that trail out there. Nobody ever uses it except when they're coming here at the house. No, it wasn't done for a joke, Candy. I think you'd better be very careful.
Where's Kenny? He's, uh, with Mrs. Party. I didn't want to bring him here to the grave. He thinks Jim's just gone away. I guess he misses his father. A little. Now. But he'll forget after a while. They do at that age, you know. Maybe after a while I will, too. It's been such a short while. And I can't even remember what Jim's voice sounded like. I loved him, Candy, and I can't remember. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. But I loved him. I know. <laughs> Please forgive me. I didn't mean to embarrass you. You didn't embarrass me. Got my shirt a little soggy, though. We better get back. I have to get Kenny. Mrs. Party will want to get back to her family. Where's Mrs. Party? Oh, uh. Well, she left Kenny with us. Uh, she said something about not having any more time to wait for you. She flew out of here with all her feathers ruffled her own way. I don't understand. Well, she went back to the cemetery looking for him. She came back, just left the boy with us, and walked off. It's just a little something I picked up along the trail. What is it? Oh, it's nothing you'd be interested in. But what? Oh, Candy, they're beautiful. Isn't that just like a woman every time? <laughs> the pretty over the practical. This is dinner. Eat. You can't eat flowers. Nobody ever gave me flowers before. I never gave anyone flowers before. <laughs> There's a hole in the north fence. I'll get to it. You don't want any deer wandering around trampling down your new crop. I'll put these in water. They'll look beautiful on the table at dinner. All from the uh, Ponderosa, huh? Thought sure Mrs. Campbell would be having some. She's been sending a lot of letters out lately. Mrs. Campbell doesn't need you to mind her business. Over me. See here, Mr. Kennedy, it's my job to read what's written on these here letters. How do you think I can stamp them right anyway? And then there's the proper charge. You call it whatever you want. Just keep your nose on that side of the counter. Kenny? Kenny! <laughs> Hiya, buddy. Kenny, I think you better get down. Sure is nice of Kennedy to help out the widow like he does. <laughs> Ain't that a picture? Of course, uh, used to be your husband did that. <laughs> Three dollars and a nickel bullet and Kennedy's got himself a lady friend. <laughs> shut up, Devlin, shut up! Goes to prove I'm right. Candy, please. I don't blame you, Kennedy. She's a good-looking woman.
Get in the wagon. I'll get your supplies. Go on. Kenny, now change your clothes. Now, why can't you come out here anymore? I didn't say that. I said it'd be better if I didn't come out here as much. But why? The planning's done. The repairs are finished. I don't have to be out here all the time. The car rates are paying me. Lisa, they expect me to work for it, for them. I know, Candy, I know. They've been very kind. But we need you. That's another thing we have to talk about. Don't you want to see us anymore? Yes, I do. And I will. By coming out here so often doesn't look good to those waggle tongues in town. Oh, it's only a few. I know, and they're gossips, and everyone knows it. But they do listen. Well, I don't care what they say. Yes, you do. You, you cared when I had to flatten Devlin just now to shut him up. And, and at least he talks out loud. What about the ones that talk behind your back? They're the ones that really hurt. And, and you're too easily hurt now, Lisa. You, you got Kenny to think of. What do we do? I'll come out on Saturdays, and we'll... If there's any heavy work to be done, I'll do it then. We've gotten used to having you around here. Me and Kenny. I know. It's gonna be a long time till Saturday. You're drunk. Now get off my land now. Oh, <laughs> you don't mean that. It's because a fella had a little nip and you want to run him off. I'm warning you, get out of here. <laughs> Bet you don't run off that candidate. Stay right there. You ain't gonna shoot me. I wouldn't bet on that. Now leave. I'm betting that ain't loaded. Well, you're just gonna have to take your chances, mister. <laughs> now, come here. Cut it out. I ain't gonna hurt you. You might even get the light. <laughs> come here. Come here, you You got no stick in this cart, right? Maybe not, but... Let's go see what the sheriff has to say. No. Ma'am? If you do that, everybody in town will hear about it. Well, just want to let him walk off? Is that what you want? Please. Get out of here, Devlin. Go. <laughs> He's likely to come back, ma'am. Oh, I don't think so. Next time I'm going to see that my gun's loaded. I hope you understand, Hawes. There's just been so much talk about this already. I'm hoping this way he'll be a little too embarrassed to say much about it. Well, I, I hope so for your sake, ma'am. Forgive me, I haven't even said thank you. Guess it's lucky for me you were coming by when you did. Well, I wasn't just happening by, ma'am. As a matter of fact, I was on my way over here. Candy said that you might need some help today, so I thought I'd come down and volunteer. Well, how come he didn't come? Well, the doctor wouldn't let him. Candy had a little hard luck. A fella took a pot shot at him, just grazed him here in the arm. Nothing serious, but the doctor won't let him out. He's lucky. He could have been killed. Me? 
Mason, what's the matter? Russ told me you'd been shot. Is that all? Don't let this thing fool you. It's not serious. It's not Devlin. I know that. It was a gunfighter. I don't know what kind of game he's playing with you, Candy, but he's serious. How do you know all this? He's Jim's brother. I asked him to come here to kill you. I wrote a letter before the inquest. All I could think of was that you'd killed Jim and I wasn't going to let you go unpunished. That was a letter you picked up and mailed. I didn't know you, Candy. All right. All right, I understand why you did it. Lucky for you, you had a gunman in the family. Jim and I hadn't seen Jake in over five years. I wasn't even sure I could reach him. After you came to help us, I realized I was only trying to hurt you to make up for losing Jim. I wrote and tried to stop Jake. I thought I reached him in time, but I guess I didn't. Candy, I'm sorry. So am I. You should have tried to kill me yourself, Lisa. It's more honest, anyway. I thought you ought to know about Jake. I don't know where he is, but at least now you can be on your guard. Oh, so I can go hide in the bunkhouse until you call him off if you can find him? No thanks. Candy, he's going to kill you. Isn't that what you wanted? Isn't it? No. No, not anymore. But I don't expect you to believe me now. Mrs. Campbell. Well, I'm sure you're quite right, Mrs. Party, since you seem to know everything about everybody in town. But you don't mind if I leave it there, just to confuse you. you go inside and wash up, okay? Hurry along now. How long have you been here? In town? Or around here, watching you cuddling with the man who murdered Jim. You had no right to spy on me. Afraid I'd see something you didn't want me to know? It's not like that, Jake. That's the way it looked. I sent you a letter. I got it. Well, then what are you doing here? I told you I changed my mind. You changed your mind. Kennedy shot Jim down, left you and the boy. And all he had to do was come around here sweet-talking, and you changed your mind. Well, sweet sister-in-law, I ain't changed mine. You were right to send for me. Maybe Jim didn't mean all that much to you. That's a lie, and you know it. Yeah? Is that why Kennedy's all but moved in? And Jim only did a month. Jake, you don't understand. Look, when I wrote you, I was upset. I was grieving so much for Jim, I, I didn't even know what I was doing. I just wanted to get even. As far as I'm concerned, that's the only thing you ever did right. I don't care how you changed your mind or why. But that boyfriend of yours killed my brother. No, Jake! He killed Jim. Now it's his turn.
Well, you know, she lost her husband. You've got to consider the shock, the deep distress. I, I agree it was wrong, but I can understand why she wrote the letter. How do you feel about it? I'm not sure. It's a little strange when someone you think is a friend wants you dead. Well, in a moment of anger, yes, but that's long gone. I realize that now. I, I guess I was a little rough on her when she told me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was angry. <laughs> come in, come in. Kenny Jake was here. I tried to talk to him, but he's determined to kill you. All right, now, don't you worry about it. I'm going to take care of it myself. What I need now is an exact description of it. Get down, get down! Get over here against the wall, quick! Kenny, stay down. Now stay down. Come on. Stay low. Get over in that corner. Kenny, get down. Try to talk to him. You tried that. Well, maybe I can make him listen now. Jake? Jake, I know you don't care what happens to me, but Kenny's in here. He's Jim's son. So much for that. Can you spot him? Not from here. When I tell you, you wave that in front of the window. Not bad, Kennedy! But not good enough! You better come out of there! If I don't! That house is gonna look like a sieve! Lisa and Kenny are in here! They don't mean a thing to me. You got two minutes to come out of there! Why, he's your own brother-in-law. He saw us together. He thinks I didn't love Jim. I'm going out there. I gotta circle out the back door around toward the barn. Candy, be careful. I'll try. Stop it.
Why didn't you shoot me in the back? This is going to be self-defense if anybody asks. All right, your, your turn, Campbell. Get up. Candy? It's all right, Liz. Get some rope. You were lucky you had help, Ranch Han. Get up! Several days. I did some thinking. Kenny and I are leaving tomorrow. I found a job over in Morgan County. It's actually working out quite nice. Uh, Ed Randolph said he'd take the farm on shares along with his own. He's going to take care of the house, the barn. Why? Why, Lisa? It's too much work for a woman. I can't expect you to go on helping me forever. Helping's not the word I had in mind. I want to marry you, Lisa. No. Candy, it's too soon for that. Take your time. There's no rush. Take all the time you want. I'm the woman who sent for a man to murder you. Remember? All right. You were hurt. You were upset. You wanted revenge. You're human, Lisa. You made a mistake. Show me someone who hasn't. I made a very big mistake. All right, but it's over, and it's behind us. That's no reason to run, Lisa. That's exactly what you're doing. Yes, Candy, I'm running. I'm running from everything I want. But there is no way in the world it's going to work. We love each other. We'll make it work. No, no Candy, just accept it. No. Tell me. Kenny is five years old. And every day he asks me when his father, his real father, is coming back. Now, if we got married, what would happen when he's 12 years old and he asks me what happened to his father? What would I tell him? That I killed him. And that would destroy all of us. I'm sorry. Betty Randolph is coming over to help me finish packing. in sunshine, always.